You know, it's, it's, it's funny because uh, only recently within the last year would I answer the question this way. And beforehand, I would jump into the business aspect first. But now the first thing would be, okay, sit out, sit down and delineate what is your mission statement or what is your purpose statement? Okay, what is the impact that you wish to create? Then, once you've got that worked out, and, and you know, and granted, that might not be a five minute thing. That might be a two to three week thing or longer as to what you, re, you know, what is really your purpose, your mission on doing this? And then, what, then you lay out what are your core values. So what you have is you have a strong foundation before the student ever walks in the door, before you ever teach that first class. You know why you're doing this, why you're making a living out of this. And pure passion is not necessarily enough. Got to have it, yes. But pure passion is not necessarily enough. Then, after that, you work out, okay, what is the kind of business model that you want to follow on? Do you want to do contracts? Uh, do you allow people to do one day a week? You know, or is it mandatory two days a week? How long is it between white belt and first grade black? Um, if a person has to take two weeks off, do you freeze their membership or do they continue to pay for that time? If they blow off of a contract before the contract time is up, are you going to be the type of person that sends a collection agency after them or are you going to send them a very nice exit letter and welcome them back, et cetera, et cetera. What's your business model? And then once you've figured out what your business model is, have capital in reserves. Because, because uh, if your operating expenses are just for fits and giggles, five thousand a month, a month, maybe have you know ten thousand sitting in the bank, fifteen thousand or a credit line, because as in any business, an overnight success is comes from hard work, and hard hard work is time intensive. So if somebody's looking to start their own school, should they first go out and make a name for themselves in point fighting? No. Or something else? No. The people that come into my school, they could care less whether I was a world champion or not. They want Johnny to have better discipline, and they wish Susie had stopped crying, and they wish Benny would stop fidgeting. And uh, Bill, oh, crime any sakes, this kid's got such bad manners at home. And uh, and Darcy, she skips school. It's like she's getting into trouble all the time. And Beth, she's a nice, nice kid, but she's just a little shy. But her brother, you know, Hector, he's got great thumb development, but he won't get off the couch, you know? And they, they don't care who you are in terms of name recognition. It's can you, can you fulfill what's needed and wanted? You know, some of the best instructors out there are people you've never heard of, people I've never heard of. But what they do is they provide a service, and which is an interesting way of looking at, like, teaching martial arts, but it is. It's a service. You pay me cash, I provide you with something in exchange. And, but it is such a tremendously valuable service that um, if you provide it, you know, it comes back on you. It comes back on you really positively. Why do you say it's tremendously valuable? Well, here's, um, and the only reason the lag here is just, just putting in the right words. There's always been a spiritual aspect to martial arts. But if we get down to nuts and bolts, we get away from, let's say, organized religion. So we're not looking at a Christianity or a Buddhism or a Hindu or a Zen or a Scientology ver viewpoint of spiritualism or religion. And you look at, okay, how I look at it is that you've got three parts to a person. And this will lead towards answering the question, by the way. You have three parts to the person. You've got the body. Okay, good. That's the car. You've got the mind, that's what you use to think with. Good, that's the whole computer operating system in the car. Then you got the driver. That's who drives the car, who uses the computer operating system to see how many gallons of gas that he has left, uh, does he need to change his oil, what's on the odometer, et cetera. Now, at the end of the day, 
Who feels insecure? Does the computer feel insecure? No. Does the car feel insecure? No. It's the driver. After uh, you, know, you get a promotion at work, does the car feel any different? No. Does the odometer read different? No. Who feels full of it and is ready to go out and party because they're happy? The driver. So when I look at an individual, you have mind, you have body, then you have the individual, okay, the personality, you know, for lack of a better term. You know, I mean, if I were in my school, I'd say, yeah, the spirit, the, the being. Now, what you get out of martial arts, in my estimation, can raise an individual in capability, self-worth, confidence, so that they can go out and achieve anything they want. You know, so where else do you get that? Do you get that from a baseball team? No. You have Wade Boggs hitting home runs all the time. Do you get that from basketball? Not if you've got Michael Jordan on your team. Uh, some, uh, there are solo sports. Can you get that from archery? Perhaps, if they teach it. You know, it's, it, it, it is such an incredible individual enhancer that, and, it, and it's using, you know, the fighting arts. Why the fighting arts? Um, because fighting arts inherently represent danger. Why do people flinch when they're even, even going slow and, and relaxed and so forth? Why? Because it, basically at the sub-aware level, it represents danger. So you start becoming familiar with danger, familiar with uh, rack em, crack em on the body and so forth. Without any other moralistic teaching, that increases your confidence. You're now able to face that which made you flinch. If you have a good instructor, and you have one who thinks outside the dojo, then what you'll have is you'll have them imparting various, uh, for lack of a better term, life lessons, so that you can take what you learn in the dojo out into the community. And what's gonna make a better world than more people getting along with more people because they have less insecurities? It's tremendously valuable.